Just let me live my life. <laughs> just let me be wrong. <laughs> just let me be wrong. Hey, this is Megan. And Sue in the restricted section. And today we're gonna do a read harder challenge check-in. Yeah, so we're just gonna go through kind of quickly and tell you each challenge, whether we've completed it or not, and maybe just give a rating of the book yes. read. Yes, we are gonna do that. <laughs> so we are gonna drink Clove Hitch by Have Spring a bison. Have a bison. <laughs> we were gonna say it together. Uh, <laughs> so I was like, Have a bison. Have a bison. Yeah, it's from Springfield Brewing Company. <laughs> It is summertime in a bottle, clove and banana-like aromas from the yeast, matched with subtle tartness from the malted wheat. Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. This smells so good. It smells like banana. It does. Mmm. Yeah, I like it. And that is crisp and refreshing. Mm-hmm. I dig that. Let's get into all these challenges. There's, if you don't know what the Read Hotter Challenge is, which if you've watched our channel for any length of time, you probably you do. You probably know. But yeah. um, this is put on by Book Riot every year, and there are 24 challenges that you are supposed to complete by the end of the year. Yes, and so we can link that down below if you are interested in checking it out, if you aren't already. Yeah, you can jump in halfway. These challenges are like a lot easier this year, so yes. even if you jumped in in the middle, you, you could probably still, still do it. <laughs> and you can count books for more than one challenge, yeah. so like you can, we, one book can we, count for... Yeah, we don't usually do that just because, mm -hmm. I don't know, we like the extra challenge, I yeah. guess, of doing a different one for each, but... Mm -hmm. But you could if you, you know, join in the end of June and want to succeed. <laughs> right. The first challenge is to read a book published posthumously. I'm glad you read that one because I can't say that word. <laughs> I cannot. Um, I have not completed that challenge yet. And I have. I read The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien and um, I gave it four stars. Yes. The next challenge is to read a book of true crime. And I read Killers of the Flower Moon by David Gran and gave it four stars. And I read In Cold Blood by Truman Capote and gave it three stars. And next is to read a classic of genre fiction, i.e. mystery, sci-fi, fantasy, etc. Etc. And I have not completed this challenge yet. Um, so I'm planning on reading Brave New World by Aldous Huxley for that, but I have not done it yet. Um, and I read Foundation by Isaac Asimov, and I gave it four stars. <laughs> <laughs> the fourth challenge is to read a comic written and illustrated by the same person. And I have not completed that yet, but I am planning to read The Poet and the Flea by G.E. Gallus. And I also have not completed that yet, but I don't know yet what I'm going to read. And the fifth challenge is a book set in or about one of the five BRICS countries, which are Brazil, Russia, India, China, or South Africa. And I read Waiting by Ha Jin, and I gave that either two or three stars. I didn't much care for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I read Heart of a Dog by Mikhail Bulgakov, and I... I think I gave it four stars. Nice. Pretty sure. So far, I just give everything four stars. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> the next challenge is to read a book about nature. I read Nature's Nether Regions by Minno Shilthusen. Shilthusen. And guess how many stars I gave it? Four. Yes. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and I read Song of the Forest by Colin McKay, and I also gave that four stars. Uh, next challenge is a western. I read Cold Black Horse by Robert Olmsted, and I gave that a four stars. I read Woe to Live On by Daniel Woodrell, and four gave stars. Four stars. <laughs> <laughs> um, next is to read a comic written or illustrated by a person of color. And we both read Kindred, the graphic novel adaptation by uh, John Jennings and Damian Duffy. Mm -hmm. Um, source material by Octavia Butler. Octavia Butler. And I gave it 4.5 stars. Yeah, you did. And I gave it <laughs> 4 stars. Uh, next challenge. A book of colonial or post-colonial literature. And literature. <laughs> I read Wild Seed by Octavia Butler. <laughs> and I gave that 4 stars. We're a little... A little loopy for some reason. <laughs> um, I have not done that challenge yet, but I'm planning to read The Last of the Mohicans by James Fenimore Cooper. Cooper. <laughs> um, that always just makes me think of Hawkeye from Nash, because that's from from whence he got his nickname. Oh, didn't mm -hmm. know that. So next is to read a romance novel by or about a person of color. 
and I read Like Water for Chocolate by Laura Esquivel. I think I gave it three stars. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh my, how the tides have turned. <laughs> It's possible I gave it four stars. <laughs> I think I gave it three. I read Haven by Rebecca Weatherspoon, and I don't know if I rated it or not, but I think I would consider it four stars because I liked it. Number 11, I read a children's classic published before 1980. And I read The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett, and I gave that four stars. I have not done that challenge yet, but I plan to read A Little Princess, also by Frances Hodgson Burnett because um, I've never read that. Next is to read a celebrity memoir. I have not completed that challenge yet, but I plan to read Not My Father's Son by Alan Cumming. And I did complete that challenge. I read Born a Crime by Trevor Noah, and I gave it full stars. Uh, number 13, read an Oprah's Book Club book, or selection, it says. <laughs> I can't read. A book from the book <laughs> club of Oprah. Yeah. Um, I read White Oleander by Janet Fitch, and I loved that book. And at the time, I gave it four stars, but I think I'm going to go back and change... Or no, I did go back and change the rating to five stars, because I really love that book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I read The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison and gave it four stars, I believe. Um, next is... So number 14 is Read a Book of Social Science. And I read White Trash by Nancy Eisenberg and gave it four stars. So I read I Am Not a Slut, um, Slut Shaming in the Age of the Internet by Leora Tannenbaum. I either gave it two or three stars. I liked most of it, but some of it I found problematic. Challenge 15 is to read a one sitting book. I read The Giver by Lois Lowry and gave it to full stars. I have not completed that challenge yet. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to read because I'm like, can I really tell if a book's a one sitting book until yeah. I sit down and read it? Um, but. I might do either, I have I Await the Devil's Coming by Mary McLean, I think, which is a pretty short book. And I also have um, The Little Prince, which I've already read, but it was a long time ago, so I might just reread that, and it's even shorter than the other one, so. Yeah, I didn't, like, write down anything I planned to read for that, because like you said, yeah. you don't really know. So I was reading The Giver, and I was like, this might be a once in a book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was. Uh, number 16 is the first book in a new-to-you YA or middle grade series. I read Skullduggery Pleasant by Derek Landy, and I believe I gave it four stars. And I read Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs, and I gave it four stars also. Uh, next is to read a sci-fi novel with a female protagonist by a female author. And I read Mind of My Mind by Octavia Butler and gave it four stars. And I read A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers and also gave it four stars. Next is to read a comic that is not published by Marvel, DC, or Image. And I read Charlie, issue two, which is independently published um, by, let's see if I can remember, Finus Massey, Chris Burgess, illustrated by Christopher Harris. Nice. Um, and I gave it 3.5 stars. And I read, I'm not going to be able to remember, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I read... Vault, which is a series, a three-issue series in John Carpenter's Tales of Science Fiction by James Ninnis, and I'm already regretting this, <laughs> Andres Esperaza, Sergio Martinez, and Janice Chang. It's published by Storm King Comics, and I gave it four stars. Uh, next is to read a book of genre fiction in translation. And I have not read that yet, and I'm actually not going to read what I had originally planned to read for that because I don't want to, and <laughs> so I don't know yet what I am going to read. Um, I have not completed that yet either. I will probably read The Deep Sea Divers Syndrome by Serge Brusolo, which was translated from French. I did not write down the translator. Sorry. Sorry, translator. When I read it, I'll say this, who the translator was. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure they get their due credit. Um, number 20 is to read a book with a cover you hate. And I read The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald, which my edition of has a cover I do not enjoy. How many stars did you give it? Oh, four. Four, four stars. stars. And I read Autumn, The City by David Moody, which is the second book in a zombie series. And I hate the cover because there's a very douchey looking gentleman <laughs> screaming on the front of it. Yeah. I don't like it. Um, but I think I gave that either three or four stars. I liked it. It was a pretty standard zombie novel. 
Um, next is to read a mystery by a person of color or LGBTQ plus author. And I read Long Black Veil by Jennifer Finney Boylan, um, who is a trans woman. And Long Black Veil also has a trans woman in the story as well. Um, I read Wife of the Gods by Quay Corte, who is a person of color. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I gave it four stars. Nice. Well, I gave Long Black Veil four stars because I also really oh. like that as well. Yeah. 22 is to read an essay anthology. And I have not yet completed that. I plan to read We Are All Stardust which is an anthology by scientists, of essays by scientists. That's pretty awesome. And I am 50% of the way through that about, um, because I am reading Not That Bad, Dispatches from Rape Culture, which is a collection of essays um, put together by Roxy and Gay. Um, the next challenge is to read a book with a female protagonist over the age of 60. I have not completed that yet, but I do plan to read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Um, I haven't completed that challenge yet either, but I will probably read the same book. Yes. Because I've heard wonderful things about it. Yes, same. Number 24, which is the last challenge, is an assigned book which you hated or never finished. And I have not completed that challenge yet, um, but I plan to read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance by Robert Pierce Persig, I think. I both did not complete and hated that book <laughs> when I was supposed to read it in high school. I'm going to read The Grapes of Wrath because I think, I don't know if we finished it in class or if we just read part of it, but I fucking hated it. And so I'm going to see if perhaps now that I'm 30, if I like it better. That's it. We're doing pretty well. Yeah. I've, I've completed, I think I have nine challenges left and we're only like halfway through the year. So That's I'm ahead awesome. of the game. Yeah. And I think I have seven left, which I think I'm just extra motivated this year because I didn't complete this last <laughs> year and I'm still like a little bit bitter at myself about it. So I barely completed last year's. Yeah. Well, weren't you reading on like New Year's Eve for this? Um, I think so. Yeah. I think I finished my last book on the last day of the year. Mm -hmm. At least you finished. I didn't even come close to finishing. Like there were <laughs> several things I did not complete. So this year I'm determined to finish this. Yeah. This year's is a lot easier too than last mm -hmm. year's. Last year's was rough. I yeah. was specific. It was rough. Um, but let us know if you're doing the Read Harder Challenge and how, how are you doing? doing. Yeah. And I really like this beer. It's I do too. It's quite tasty, quite refreshing. Um, good summer beer. Great summer beer. Yeah, this is really good. And it smells like bananas. It does. And there's like mm, a, I love bananas. The <laughs> banana taste in it is not like overpowering mm -hmm. or anything because like bananas are kind of imposing with their flavor sometimes. But like it's not in this. It tastes. I think the most powerful flavor is the clove. I think so. Yeah. Um, but it ha it does have the banana e flavor it does. as mm. well. But it's it's really good. It's really good. So there will be some links down below where you can find us elsewhere on the internet. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.